one of the greatest revivals the world has ever seen, two men on the platform were suddenly struck down dead, consumed by the fire of Yah. What do you think happened? Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Tour, day number three, the Torah portion of Shemini. And we come to this infamous chapter, you might say, Leviticus, Vayikra, chapter number 10. And so let's read the first three verses. And Nadav and Avahu, the sons of Aaron, each took his fire holder and put fire in it and put incense on it and brought strange fire before Yahweh, which he had not commanded them. That's important. And fire came out from Yahweh and consumed them, and they died before Yahweh. Then Moshe said to Aaron, This is what Yahweh spoke, saying, By those who come near me, let me be set apart, and before all the people, let me be esteemed. And Aaron, the father of these two young men, he held his peace. He didn't say a word. It says he was silent. So the speculation has gone on for many, many years, generations, thousands of years perhaps, as to what was the violation that caused these two men, Nadav and Avahu, to be suddenly consumed. Well, there is following later in the the discourse here in verse 9, do not drink wine or strong drink, you nor your sons with you when you go into the tent of appointment, lest you die a law forever throughout your generations. So there is worthy speculation and understanding that perhaps these two young men were drunk or had consumed strong beverage of some sort. Therefore, in a slightly intoxicated, moderately intoxicated, overly intoxicated state, we don't know, that they tried to do their duties. But that's not what the word says. Other speculators have said, well, it's because uh, they went into the Holy of Holies. We're not necessarily told that they did, it's possible. You could read that into what is being stated here, but it's not stated specifically. Then there is the idea of strange fire. Strange in that it came from an alternate source other than the coals of fire that were on the altar of sacrifice in the courtyard. That would be the appropriate place to source the coals. Did they take them from the fire that they had at home around the kitchen? Was it because the fire source was inappropriate? One could very easily, very easily read that. It simply says that the reason that the fire was strange before Yah is that they were doing what he had not asked them to do. It says he had not commanded them. In other words, the activity of that day was limited to that which was commanded. Yah has a certain set of protocols in the Levitical order that he wants to be followed. This is how you do each role, each duty, each job. This is the way I want it done. When we began to impose our own order, our own freelance ideas, when we began to wing it, as we might say, therein is where we began to find trouble. So the reason, more than anything else, some of these other things very well may have played a part, and there are others, the list could go on. But the reason that Yah rejected their offering of incense and fire went out and destroyed them is because they violated a boundary. Now let's think a little deeper on this today. When Yah created the physical realm, and I had not thought about this until I read some commentary some several many years ago, that Yah withheld a certain part of himself. That if Yah had fully revealed himself in the created order, 
then there would have been no difference between that which was created and the creator, and it would have all just absorbed right back into the creator. If all of Yah's light had been revealed, then the light would have been reabsorbed because there was nothing there to hold it in place. There has to be a a righteous stickiness <laughs> to get something to stick. And so the physical realm was created apart from the spiritual realm. Just so then, and one way of thinking about this is that there would be something to stick, something to hold its place. That being understood then, there is the potential of this sticky spot, this physical realm arena, that it could be without the full revelation of the Father and of the Creator, it could become defiled. Well, we have proven that theory quite readily, have we not? So there are two things that Yah has chosen to to bring of the the uh, revelation of Himself into our world to reveal Himself, and that is time and space. I've talked about this before at some points, but for instance, time, Shabbat, and the feast days, the Hamoedim, these are time allotments in the physical realm that are set apart. They're of the Father's realm. And he places them here for us to not argue about and not um, uh, manufacture our codes of compliance about, but to step into. He's already given us understanding as how we are to recognize and observe and join him in these spaces of time, or allotments of time is the better way of saying it. And as we do so, he meets with us in these time portions, segments. They are set apart, and when we enter into them with him, we are set apart with him. And so it's an act of actual worship to discern these times according to Scripture, embrace them, and accept him, accept them. And it's a part of recognizing him and loving him in doing so. But he has also given us a set-apart space. Now, it's not wherever we find a cathedral or a religious edifice. It is the Mishkan, the tabernacle. Later on, in, in their dwelling in the land, the temple. But here in the wilderness, the tabernacle is a set-apart space. One may not just freely walk through the entrance and meander around and touch and handle and see. This is not a museum. This is a functioning revelation of Yeshua the Messiah given to Israel. This is a place, a, 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 a spatial environment that Yah says, this belongs to me. And if you're going to move in this space with me, we must recognize who you are, what your role will be here, why you are here, and what it is that you intend to do. Yah has set the rules for occupation and for presence in this space. So what happened then? He has said that this space is kadosh. It is set apart. This means then that Yah's yearnings and desires are the only thing to be carried out here. Nadav and Avahu found some way of their in their euphoria and their zeal and their yearning and desire to worship at a higher level thought it a good idea, let's get some incense and wave it before him. Where they did, I don't know. But Yah said, you violated my commands, and he took them out. The severity of that action serves notice on all who see the, in, the intimate presence of the Most High 
He is set apart. You must be set apart. And if you're going to be with him, you must be with him his way. More on this tomorrow. To this, Shalom. Thank you.